welcome to the captain's video blog we are uh wednesday yeah november the 30th 2016 closing off on you know the 11th month of tw out of 20 12 20. god i don't want 20 months of 2016 who might die in the remaining uh like nine months i don't want to know yeah but who and uh, who might die in the remaining month I don't want to know either. Like, if I want to do, you know, a recap of the year on Dece December the thirty first, uh, maybe I won't do it because Jesus Christ. Like last year, I did a twelve minute video that I filmed around around noon, and it was like at nine p.m. I was really afraid that it wouldn't be online before before midnight, and my phone was continuously on. Uh, unlike this, uh, like today, like today, yesterday's video blog is just online right now, just on, on time to make me remember, you know, like maybe um, 23 hours in the upload that uh, I had completely forgot about talking uh, about uh, the uh, Mark Henry is apparently having a role in the new WWE film that um, uh, apparently is, can be summed up as He's getting punched in the face by by Aaron Eckert, <sighs> whoever that is, and uh, Titus O'Neil is pissed about that. Like, would you have wanted to be punched in the face by Aaron Eckert? I don't know. Sounded weird. Um, so yeah, <laughs> what happened with yesterday's video blog uh, upload? Well, my phone went out of battery a couple of times during the uh, the morning, and. Um, but that's not really the most important thing. You know, I after th 15 minutes turned it back on because I was waiting for a call, and uh, then uh, it was actually when I went to sleep that uh, it fucked up. Because when I went to sleep, I just watched a video, then uh, left the YouTube app, uh, or sent a message, and then I fell asleep before going back onto the YouTube app. So uh, <laughs> I realized it after I woke up. Uh, and uh, not even after I woke up, uh, when I, after, like around midnight, I realized that. Um, so yeah, uh, well, so why was I waiting for a call? Well, I ordered an OTG USB cable, you know, because I have a huge anime backlog, like 200 something series, films, uh, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of a bother to go through uh, the transfer. Uh, from the, the 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 hard drive to my phone, or from the computer to my phone, and uh, I would want to want to watch it directly. You know, so I order uh, an OTG an OTG uh, a cable. Uh, I was waiting for the call because usually the people who deliver that uh, from Amazon uh, they uh, call me to make sure that I'm here. Uh, this time around, didn't do it. Like. I was in the kitchen, like really in the position where I'm in right now, and I watched the dude uh, from the delivery company walk to the the the, the post box, postal box, yeah, and um, <laughs> put the parcel in the in the box, and I was like, "Hey, dude, I'm here. You you can see me, really?" <laughs> and he was like, "Sorry, don't sorry me, man. <laughs> like, what the fuck?" And uh, so when I, when I woke up, uh, like. Uh, I watched Marte draw against uh, against Saint Etienne, which is, you know, it's kind of sad because it's pretty much the same kind of match as uh, against Caen, except that Caen did did defend with their eleven players, and Saint Etienne really didn't. They tried uh, going on the on the offense a couple of times, but it didn't work. Uh, the only problem is that the Marseille players either they don't shoot on target or they shoot in the goalkeeper, and I'm like, <laughs> just. <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, so it ended ended in a goalless draw, which is already a much better <laughs> result than uh, Saturday's uh, four nil. You know, so, mm. uh, so yeah. But it's not a really good result when you realize that uh, on Sunday uh, they are facing Nancy, who won four nil against uh, Mess, and Nancy was supposed to be, you know, the <laughs> currently one of the best teams to face because I mean they are pretty weak. Except they are really not. Uh, <laughs> uh, then again, you know, the whole month of December is going to be full of easy teams, um, including social in the in the in the league cup. But it would all all be traps, you know, um, at least more obvious traps. 
than against uh, you know the first two matches of 2017 that are against Monaco and Lyon. Like, at least you know Monaco it will be in Marseille, Lyon it will be in Lyon. It's going to be complicated, but at least you know we'll have new players. Hopefully, uh, better players. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so yeah, uh, there's that. Uh, like, what? I just really hope that Nancy isn't going to play like they did uh, tonight because uh, if they do well it's going to be complicated to win um, so yeah anyway let's go on to Smackdown so Smackdown wasn't bad it wasn't the best thing though um, I just like I have fonder mem memories of Raw than I have uh, than I have uh, for Smackdown, then again, I have only fond memories of Raw uh, because of the uh, the main event. Um, there were that when for Smackdown, it's just like the first hour was really solid. So let's go through it. So the show started with um, with uh, the the contract signing for the the women's match. Like I was sure that um, maybe there would be an opening segment. I didn't I didn't realize that. Uh, uh, the women's championship match was the only one without a, a stipulation because I didn't feel like it needed a stipulation. And again, it's TLC, so stipulation, stipulations, huh? <laughs> um, uh, so there was a table, and uh, obviously that was the only one that was lacking the stipulation of the TLC. And uh, well, I mean, it's going to be a tables match. It feels pretty obvious from the get go. Uh, one is going to go through a tra table. Looked like it was going to be Alexa Bliss, like they tossed on Smack and then. Uh, Lynch uh, f sucker punched uh, Bliss because well I mean they're all getting on each other's nerves and uh, I mean they react they react really well to provocation to to trash talking and that's really great you know that's something that is lives better on on SmackDown than on Raw it's how well the women are, are handling themselves with the microphone. Like on on Raw, they are getting overwhelmed uh, when they cannot go uh, following the script. On SmackDown, Carmella got got how you doing chanted at her like for thirty seconds. Then she said, "I will be doing much better when this one I I'm out of, I'm out of here." And then she went on back. She went back on with the script. It felt it was felt better, you know. Um, so yeah, felt like Bliss was going to go through the table because she was on the receiving uh, she receiving heads of a suplex, but then um, it, it wasn't through the table, so uh, Lynch set up a table, went to the top turnbuckle to go th with a, with a uh, superplex, but I rake and pushed through the table, writhing in pain. Oh, I felt the pain, like she saw it for like, saw it three minutes. And then she was, you know, like later in, in the show, like middle of the second hour, she was in an interview when she was told that uh, there was going, uh, <laughs> Bliss uh, challenged her to a uh, tables match. She said, eh, let's have a tables match. I don't care if I have to give, uh, get an ice pack on my back for until Sunday, but I will get revenge on this little bitch. And I was shocked that uh they would say you know us usually the word bitch is more used as a son of a bitch you know it's not directly addressing the person as a bitch you know they are saying that they are they are someone else's bitch they are not saying that they are a bitch just that and it felt you know that much powerful uh <laughs> and then you know she went to she went on talking smack and saying yeah this is just you know, she went to, to, to Mike Mizanin, not The Miz, Mike Mizanin, two uh, really, you know, um, persons, one, of the, one is a wrestler, the other one talks, they talk as well, really, uh, the only difference, you know, they talk shit about, about Daniel Bryan, they talk well about The Miz, I mean, The Miz obviously will talk well about The Miz, but Mike Mizanin really sounded like a Miz apologist, and also seemed to have, you know, some uh, insider information on the psyche of the of the Miz because I mean he didn't trash talk raw as much as Daniel Bryan would do so maybe he knows that the Miz doesn't really feel confident about the ladder match I don't know um, you know maybe softening up uh, the, the the way through uh, a trade-off I don't know maybe 
it's going to be uh, something to to see like Sunday. But wait, not waiting until Sunday. The Miz and Dolph Ziggler were in a match, but it was a tag match. So the Miz was paired up with Baron Corbin and uh, Dolph Ziggler obviously with Kalisto. So it was setting up the matches. Pretty insipid tag match when it comes to the action in the ring. Um, the people, you know, some people batter themselves up in, in at the ringside area, and JBL was like, "Yeah, but usually those two are already like that today. What's gonna be on Sunday with ladders?" Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> it's gonna be. It's going to be pretty bad if uh, Dolph Ziggler cannot handle being uh, receiving uh, a ladder to uh, the back ten minutes into a match, a tag match, when it's pushed by <laughs> by Maurice when she didn't really try. You know, she just pushed the ladder onto him uh, and then you know uh, created you know uh, while there was that Kalisto was going for the 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 solid del sol put it you know pretty well pretty well executed um, and uh, as he was going for the pin got shared in the back by Baron Corbin to just remind us that they are facing each other in the most you know bullshit stipulation of the three you know uh, tables match okay sure a uh, ladder match, yeah, sure, great. Chairs match, what? <laughs> yeah, now. So, <sighs> it's, it's the go home show. You know, I we just really need to feel that there are stakes uh, and there are gimmicks and there are stipulations. Just, uh, w I mean, at least works better than on Raw. You know, when on <laughs> the go home show on Raw, Pfft, what is that? Uh, so yeah, there was. The Carmela, when to Carmela was talking shit about Nikki Bella uh, by talking to John Cena and to the E Network. And apparently, what really ticked off Nikki Bella was when uh, Carmela talked about <laughs> the possible cancellation of, of a season 2 of Total Bellas. Like, she only reacted that she consti consistently talked about, you know, um, uh, <laughs> like. Making your your uh, breast implants go out go out by, by from your back and then uh, redoing your face and you only react to your show your reality show being cancelled yeah I mean at least she had you know kind of a, a good good reaction to Spears punches in the corner made Carmela retreat but yeah it just feels like they are grasping at straws to keep this this rivalry hot you know <laughs> when it really should have blown over. Uh, before they involved John Cena and you know uh, and Daniel Bryan even to all that, so maybe by no mercy it should have already been done. Like it started at SummerSlam because Carmella, well after SummerSlam because Carmella was uh, felt like she was upstaged by the veteran Nikki Bella uh, in her hometown for her pay per view debut, and you know it shouldn't been it shouldn't have been more than that. I think they tried to go too far with it. It's just one of the, it's just the one failed uh, uh, storyline. That and you know uh, every anything involving the Paul Cruz and uh, and uh, uh, most of the tag teams actually. You know, so speaking of the tag teams, there's a little thing with American Alpha saying that uh, they feel similar to the Wyatt family, and therefore the Wyatt family should run when American Alpha do are dashing to the ring. And then there was immediately the response from the Wyatt family, especially with uh, Randy. This being it's sort of a weird uh, ambience in the Wyatt family, really, <laughs> because Randy seemed to uh, to challenge um, Luke Harper to win a match. You know, he's lost to Kane uh, in the pre-show of the of the Survivor Series, and he lost tonight too. Uh, so that's like. You know, he was told to send Kane back to hell. That didn't work. Uh, it's just not a good match. It's just you know, it really felt like the second hour was dragging on. Two matches they were on the second hour. Um, so yeah, uh, and to close off the first hour, uh, the Ambrose Asylum. Um, Ambrose was with his guest referee, uh, guest referee, guest, just guest, uh, James Ellsworth. He asked him who he was going to be rooting for in the TLT match for the WWE World Championship. He was like, "Yeah, I'm going to root for. Uh, I don't know. I want to face you because you're my friend, and I and I, you know, really respect you. But I do feel like I have the number of uh, of AJ Styles, which is well, kind of a 
well, beats of uh, boast, <laughs> badass boast, but he has beaten him three times, so mm, objectively you kind of you kind of can feel that. Uh, AJ Styles didn't take too kindly to that and uh, beat the shit out of Elzer, like th uh, through chairs in the ladder. The stars clash of the steel steps. Ooh, that looked nasty. Like he 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 added uh, just a little dose of verbal abuse on uh, on talking to Mike when he said everybody despises uh, James Ellsworth. You know because Mike Nizin was talking about, for example, Apollo Cruz not having the chances he he should get. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he, he sees the style clash of the steel steps. Ooh, uh, that looked nasty. Like, oh god, what are you doing? Uh, um, <laughs> at least he was. He didn't tuck his chin like the first time. Well, I mean, he can he, he can tuck his chin. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it looked like his head wa did bounce off the steel step. But it, it was probably more Styles holding uh, Ellsworth's head with his knees. Uh, at least that's my thought. Uh, my thought. Uh, Ambrose felt really sorry um, as he was walking uh, near, uh, close to him, you know, towards the ambulance. Uh, but yeah, uh, so he came back to bite um, <laughs> AJ Styles in the in the back at the end of SmackDown uh, because as the the tag team champions were watching the number one contenders match, you know that Randy and uh, Bray won thanks to Luke Harper actually. You know, there was a kind of a uh, really good sequence at the end after, you know, there was a wonderful superplex by by Orton on, on Gable, like, ooh, just amazing. And then it was a kind of sloppy RKO on the setup of the Grand Amplitude, like uh, Jordan was going for the Grand Amplitude on on um, on uh, Bray Wyatt, but uh, Randy Orton R RKO'd, uh, RKO'd. Uh, Gable, but it was kind of sloppy. But then again, Orton was really close to the turnbuckle, so it could have gone wrong. Uh, and then you know he took the bullet once again when he got uh, bashed into the corner by Jordan Orton, and it gave enough time for Harper to just uh, throw um, what of the the turnbuckles and uh, for Jordan to eat the uh, the. Uh, uh huh. The the post and then Sister Abigail and uh, American Alpha are screwed once again. Maybe it's going to fuel a heel turn, but I do think that it's just that the American Alpha they are not going to get hurt from losing that match. It's going to go great for them. They're gonna have a legit shot at the titles later. I mean, it was either they were going for the titles the very first time, or they are going to wait for some more time because Wyatt is in desperate need of a title run. Actually, he hasn't had a title run in his first three years in the main roster. So yeah, and then there was the debut of Two Five Live with the crowd being mostly dead until the very end of the of the title match, which was a very good match. So that's kind of how the crowd was back into the wrestling. So sorry enough with all the teams being the people being presented, little vignettes like Daniel Bryan said it's really important to to uh, show who the wrestlers are and he did the, you know the people did that very well. They did like on the CWC uh, with uh, vignettes for the Bollywood boys and Rich Swan and Noam Zark who didn't have the match. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the Bollywood boys uh, won a match against against Tony Nese and Drew Gulak, um, which is to me, good booking. Nice and Gulak aren't an actual team. They are very good wrestlers. They are very good together. Not an actual team uh, like the, <laughs> the the Bollywood Boys. That's really important. You know, uh, it, it just felt like the Bollywood Boys, as a team, should win against the two guys who are kind of thrown together, who are have been teaming up for the last month, but still thrown together. Then there was Jagger, wonderful. You know, his his antics, his theatrics in the ring. Are just amazing, and he won against uh, Mustafa Ali. Uh, but it was great. Like he, he's just so good. You know, it's just a shame that no one react reacts to him. Uh, but at least you know uh, they reacted very well, positively to Rich Swan's victory because he's the new cruiserweight champion. Very good feel feel good moment. Uh, this title, and he 
it, it's all of us, you know. I really felt it, like when he countered the uh, the the bully choke, whatever the the actual name is. Even Austin Aries was on 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 board with that, and he felt great. So yeah, the only challenge for two or five five is pulling back the crowd into it, even though most of the crowd is actually left at that point. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.